Okay. All right, let's, let's do a little bit of uh, network model today. Uh, basically, that we want you, what we're going to do today is that uh, to show you how we have seen how data communication takes place, right, at the, at the lower level, at the bit level, at uh, media level, and so on. But oh, at, at higher level, especially when it comes to network applications, then we need to, to do things more systematically. Right? For example, when you are accessing internet, right? you're using a network, uh, you're using a network uh, application. Right? But uh, uh, decide, decide, decide. Three or three, everybody say decide. So there's a special incentive you should decide today. Right? Uh, so anyway, so network application, so if you're using network application, it will make use of all the things you have learned so far. Right? You, you do, for example, like a uh, web, web browser, you click on a, on, a, on a URL, what happens? You want to go to say yahoo.com, right? Now your machine has to find yahoo.com. Do you know where it is? Where is the server at yahoo.com? Of course, in Yahoo headquarters, yes. But where is Yahoo headquarters? Right? So we don't know. We don't know. Actually, we don't care also. We don't want to know. Right? As long as we know we can get to the server, it's not hijacked, it's okay. It's a legitimate one. It's a valid one, right? The thing is that once you do an application on the user side, it goes through multiple la layers in your application, your browser. Your browser will pass it on to your network card. Network, network card will pass on to the network cable, right? And then go along the other way, somehow go through the routers, go through the switches, go through the ISP, and so on, and then try to find its way to go to the Yahoo website, right? So what we're going to do today in network model is basically to find, to see how these processes or how these jobs are done. Right? You cannot do it simply like that. There must be a systematic way. All right, so, just to give an example, for example, you are sending a letter, right? I don't know how many of you send a letter. Have you any, anyone sent a letter before? To someone, I know most of you send emails and SMS and WhatsApp and all this. Have anyone sent a letter? Recently? No? Application letter? Love letter? Or a birthday card? No also. Yeah, we, everyone is doing electronic. Okay, but you, don't, you know what a letter is. It's like you say you, you, let's say you want to send Hari Raya card, right? You know how to send, isn't it? What do you do? If you send Hari Raya card, what do you do first? Buy Hari Raya card first, right? After buy, what do you do? You write a message, okay. Write a message where? On the card, okay. Then what do you do? After you write a message, on through Hari Raya card, what do you do? Huh? You put in an envelope, okay. After that, you buy a stamp. Then, write an address. After that, you post it, right? After that, after you post it, you just wait, right? So that's the end of story. So your job is to buy, buy Hari Raya card, put all this thing, and you post it. That's, the, that's your, your job. You're done. After that, whatever happens is not your control anymore. Right? Whether it reaches to the other side or not, you wouldn't know. So basically, things that there are multiple steps there, right? So, same thing. So, you put an envelope, and all, okay, now, now you know what you're doing, Harari card, okay? Now, Harari card, you post it. Where do you post it? Into a post box. Right, your own post office. Now what happens after that? How does the post office function? What does it do with your Harari card? Does it open and read it? No. Why? Why doesn't, the, why doesn't the postman open and read your card? You're not supposed to anyway, but why doesn't he, he or she, the postman, the postwoman open the Harari card and read it? Huh? Why not? It's a greeting card, yeah. He or she might feel happy too. So why does the postwoman or postman does not open the Harari card you sent? 
It's, it's not for them. How does he, he or she know it's not for them? The address, right? Right, so the address is there. So it just indicates who the receiver should be. So what does the postman and the postwoman do? Deliver the card. So he or she should not open the card, right? Okay, so the postman comes to the post box, collect your card. After that, what happens? What does the postman do? He goes to, he goes to run from post box to post box, or go to the post office, collect all those cards. What does he do? He puts in a big bag. After that, what is he supposed to do? Does he throw the big bag away somewhere? Some postmen do that. You might have heard in the news, right? Some postmen did that and they were caught. You're not supposed to do that. So, the postman goes to uh, collect all those Hariraya cards, put it in, the, in a big bag. Then, what, what did they do in the post office? What do you think they do in the post office? What do they do in the post office? To sort the letters, to sort the Hariraya card according to what? According to? Zip code, okay. So the Hari he says Hariraya cards are sorted according to zip code. Zip code represents address, right? So basically, what what uh, what the the post people, the, the postman in the in the post in the post office will do collect all these Hariraya cards from various places, bring it to one place, and then sort them out. How to sort them out? Basically, is to put that okay. Which cards are going to KL? Put one side, to Malacca one side, Kota Baru one side. Okay. Now collect all the cards into one into one different bags according to their destination. Then what happens? After, this, after you sort it out, the cards are put into big bags according to the destination. Then? Then what happens? Huh? What happens? Or what should happen? What should happen anyway? What happens? The postman already sorted out the card, her rare cards according to destination, right? So how, what happens after that? Send. Right, so the post, the post office is supposed to send those boxes or rather the, the, the bags of, of cards to destination. So either they send it by, how do you send it? Either by rail or by van or by flight, doesn't matter. Right, so all these big boxes or big bags of cards will go to, let's say, KL. What the KL post office will do? They will take the big bag of cards, right? It's meant for KL or post office. What they will do? They will take out the cards and then sort again according to different housing area. Then after that, the postman will take each po the postman who's who is in charge of that particular housing area will collect that will collect those cards belonging to that housing area and then start distributing one by one. Right? Hopefully, he or she will put it into, into the right post box. Right? And then, the person on the other side will actually get a card. Right? So, this is basically a layered architecture, what you would say. So, this was basically explained here. So, along the way, the message you write on the card, nobody else is supposed to see except the, the recipient. Right? So, your friend in KL, in say Jalan SS2 PJ, number house number 10, and the person is say Ahmad, and only Ahmad should read, not his parents by right. My right? parents should open the letter of the, of the children. Okay, but. So that person only should read the card. And nobody else goes into nobody else actually reads, reads the message. So how it happens is that you put your card into an envelope, right? Put in the post box. When the postman come and collect, they will collect the individual cards. Yeah, they will collect the envelopes. They want to collect the cards. The cards already in the envelope. Collect the envelopes, put it into a big bag, and then they will sort it according to the destination and put it into a big bag somehow, according to destination and so on. Right. So this is multiple layers here. So there's a hierarchy of tasks. Each there's a layer. Each layer doing something. Right. So the postman, the 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 people working in the post uh, the post office, the one who sorts the mail. The, one, the postman who delivers it, all these are basically different layers. Right, so there's a sender, there's a receiver, the carrier. So carrier in this case will be the transport. Right? Either you're sending by, uh, by, sending by, by uh, 
van or by train or by, by flight or by ship and so on. Right? Email doesn't count. It doesn't work this way. All right, so this is what we are, we are trying to tell here. Right, so, so in other words, each there is, there, is, uh, there is someone in charge of doing different tasks, and they specialize in that task only. Right? And they do not look at the contents of the message. Right? So this is where the model comes in. So to do all these tasks, network, network application tasks, so there is a model here. This is the OSI model. Right? And then this model has been a reference, been used since then. It covers all aspects of the network communication. It basically set, provides a set of protocols that allow different systems to communicate right, between the sender and the receiver. Right? And it's an OSI model it basically is a standard by the ISO itself, right? the International Standards Organization. So everything has been standardized. So the OSI models consist of seven layers here. That means there are seven different specialized tasks being done inside the, the machine once you transmit a data. Right? So these are the seven, seven layers. So each layer has a different function, has a specialized job, right? just like you see the postman, the, the, sort, the, 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 the person who sorts the letters, the person who delivers the letters, and so on. Each one has a special task. Each layer uses services provided by layer below. Right? So layer below is provide services, and the layer up will make use of services, and then it will again provide services to the upper layer. So it's like a hierarchy of services. Right? So there are seven layers uh, in this particular order, from the bottom right to the top. Right? So you need to know all these seven layers. Some people have difficulty remembering, so there is an easy way to remember them if, if you need this help. Right? But it doesn't matter. Make sure you know all these seven layers. All right. So, so now we come to the example. Earlier, we were giving an example of sending a hardware card. Now we're giving an example of sending a data from one machine to another machine. Right? So how the machines are connected? They are basically connected over the, the cable. That connects them. Right? And then they might go through intermediate nodes, or they might go through routers and switches and other servers. So it doesn't matter. And at each, at each uh, machine, it has to go through these seven layers. The user will be up here. And then the, the data, whatever you want to say, you, you want to send, it will go through seven layers until it goes to physical layer. Then the bits are transmitted over physical layer. Goes to intermediate node, and then come down. Goes to next intermediate node, come down, until it reaches the destination. Right? So nobody opens the message until it reaches the destination. Just like post office is not. You send a hardware card, they, they read your envelope. Most of the time, they only read your envelope, the address on it. They will not open the card. Right? And then put back into another envelope, another bag or whatever, put bags into one big bag, into one, bag, one big box, so you can transport on a container, for example, on the, on the lorry or on the ship or, or the flight. Right? Basically packaging. So each, so Different layers will communicate with uh, the same layer will communicate on the same same layer on the other device. You right? will see this how it happens. So don't worry about this one yet. Right? So again, same thing. This is your user here. You are sending data to send to the to the transmission cable. You have to go through the seven layers. Then the bits are being transmitted. Then the bits arrive on the destination. Then they will be again picked up and then passed through seven layers. Verify each time, and then only it will be given to the user. Right? It's like hardware card. If you hardware card somehow you send to Kelantan, but it was sent put wrongly into the into the flight to KL. So the KL post office received hardware card by mistake. You're supposed to go to go to Kota Baru, but it goes to KL post office. What they will do? They will somehow take it out and then send again. Of course, it will be delayed. So the layers on sender, what the sender do is that get data from layer above, right? Add some header or trailer, extra information, and then pass the frame to the layer below. Right? Just like you say, the hardware card receive, you get an envelope in the card, and then you pass it on to the, to the, to the post office. Post office puts it into a box. All the same hardware cards which goes to the same destination put into one box. So they put everything together. Right? So this, that's basically header, header and trailer. 
putting extra information. On the receiving side, it will receive the frame from the layer below, right upwards. Remove the header trailer, check whether it is, it is correct or not, error checking, and so on. And then if everything is OK, then only really pass the data to the layer above. Right? So this is called data encapsulation. So in the diagram, you can see the higher level, you only have the sender sends the data. Right? The layer, layer 7. OK, maybe the next one. Right. So the user on here wants to send the data. The, the layer 7 will put a header there. So this whole thing will become the data for the next layer. And the layer 6 will put its own header here. Right? Identifier, header means basically identifier. To identify this is belongs to header, uh, level 6, layer 6, and then put some extra information. And then this whole thing becomes the data for the next layer. So you will see that layer 6 does not look into the contents. It will take whatever is given by layer 7, it becomes its own data, and then it, it treats it as, 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 a, as data, and then puts its own header, and then pass it on to the layer below, and so on. Until layer 2 receives it, pass it on to layer 1, layer, 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 layer 1 will basically convert the, the, the bits into the signals, and then transmit over to the cable. And then on the receiver side, what it will do is in, in the reverse. So layer 1 will receive the signals, convert into bits, and then also recognize whether it recognizes this header or not. If it recognizes this header, that means this thing is OK. Then it will send the, the contents of it to the layer above. Right? If something is wrong with this, that means this whole thing cannot be trusted. Right? It's like the package received by KL Post Office. The package says, Kota Baru, but received in KL Post Office. Something is wrong. I reject straight away. No point me open up, opening up that particular box because all the harayakas inside there belongs to Kota Baru, right? not KL. Right? So they must check. So same thing. Next layer will do the same thing also. You will check the header. If header is OK, that means this data is correct. Then only pass the data upwards and so on. So finally, once it goes through all the layers, the receiver will actually receive the, the, the same data which was sent by the, the user. Right? Hopefully. Normally it does. Right? So there's a lot of work being done in the meantime, in the intermediate between sending and receiving. Right? So each layer will recognize its own type. Right? Layer 3 will recognize its own headers, and then you'll make sure that the other side will actually understand it. All right, so let's begin with first layer. Right? So layer 1 is at the bottom. At the bottom means that this layer is actually connected to the network car, and that is connected to the transmission media, the cable itself. So layer 1 deals with uh, signals. Right? It will convert the bits into signals so that the signals can be transmitted over the cable. Right? We have seen the techniques before, right? how to convert bits into signals. Right? Whether they're analog or digital, doesn't matter. It converts those signals. Right? So here we also have to think about data rate, how fast we can transmit, data synchronization, we also have to look at it. Right? Line configuration, whether the, the cable allows you point to point or is it multi point? Right? You know this also, the topology and all these things. Right? Which topology is the cable use? Because it's important to know. So, physical layer will, will know all these all this functions, will know all these things. It needs this information if, before it can transmit. And also, whether the, the cable supp uh, supports simplex, half duplex, or full duplex. Right? You know the difference now. Right? So physical layer is the one which is do, does the, all the work, the dirty, dirty work in other words. Right? Okay. Simple enough. Right? So physical layer will receive the data, in this case the bits from the layer 2. It will convert the bits into signals and then transmit the signals will be transmitted over the cable. Right? It just transmits. It doesn't care. It doesn't know where it's going or whatever. Its job is just to transmit the signals onto the cable. Right? So move, move more of individual bits from one hop to the next, and see wherever the cable goes, the signal should be uh, passed on to that. 
All right, layer two. So now layer one is very simple. Get the bits, convert into signals, and then just transmit. All right. Layer two is the one deals with addresses. All right. So before you can send the bits to layer one, you must make sure putting the package. In this case, a frame. Right. This is your case. You put a your Hari Raya card into a envelope. Right. So you put it into a package, which is a frame, and you must put address there on the frame. In this case, we use there's a different address called a layer two address or the MAC address, media media access control address. Right. So each particular li link will have a, a address. And so layer two is responsible for node to node delivery, it means from one hop to another hop, from one machine to another machine. It makes sure that data is delivered correctly to the other side. Right? Flow control, right? Make sure data is transmitted and can received enough. If I cannot be transmitting too fast or too slow, it depends you must agree on the uh, transmit rate on the other side. Error control, right? It makes sure that the data is no errors. So here you will send using all these things, parity bits, two-dimensional parity bits or CRC. So you will put all these things into the header. So the header of layer two will contain error control information. Right? You have parity bits or two-dimensional parity bits or CRC. Right? So, the, so the layer two on the receiving side you can actually check the contents. Right? And also it also uh, controls access, meaning that how data is how the devices are connected together. Right? So there are multiple devices connected to the same uh, cable. All right. So how do they actually talk to each other? Right? Who has control? When one send data, can the other also send data or not? If they take turns, how do they take turns? Who decides who goes first, who goes second and so on? Right? We will take, there's one chapter on this, we will take a look at this. Uh, so basically what, for, for now it's basically it determines which device has control of link at one time and then who can send data at any one time. So there are two uh, protocols here which is handled by the layer two. Right? So, so layer two basically puts all this, this thing and then gives it to layer one. Say okay, send. Layer one receives whatever bits given by the layer two and then just convert your signal and just send it off. That's it. Right? So then if you go back to the diagram here, so now layer two will, once it gets the bits from the layer one, there's a header here. The header contains the error control check, error control code. So you will compare the CRC and see whether any, you will do the, the, multi, the, the division and all that and check whether these bits are any error or not, or check the parity bits and so on. So all these things will be put into the header. If everything's okay, then you will pass on the data to the layer above. If something's wrong, that data will be rejected and sent down, right? or just ignore, throw it away. Right? So each layer will do, will do the similar tasks. Right? So receive data from layer above, right? and that puts header and trailer, mix it into a frame, and then pass it on to the physical layer. Then layer two's job is done. Right? On the other side, again, you will, you will get the bits from the layer two and layer one, and then check the hidden trailer if it's correct. Then the data, the contents will be passed on to higher, higher layer. Right? So data link layer is responsible for moving frames from one hop to the next, from one place, from one machine to another machine. Right? Okay. This is where the experiment comes in now. So now, you are, each, each of you is one machine, right? Currently, you only have, you only, your, your brain works to layer, layer two only, right? That means you only know how to send data from one machine to another machine. In the case, one person to another person, all right? So what's your data? This is your data, right? So what are you going to do? I'm going to pass a few here, so you take some. Doesn't matter what it is. It's, they're, they're just empty sheets. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't pass yet. Keep us, keep us. All right. So it works like this. 
this is so you are a, a machine now layer 2 your layer 2 control right so what you're going to do is that you're going to pass the data to the next machine which is one hop away one person next to you it doesn't matter it doesn't matter left right or whatever it is just pass you can only pass one data at a time means one piece of paper at a time right if and once it passed to you you cannot pass back you must pass to someone else that's the rule right that's, that's how it works so he will pass one, one paper at a time to anybody besides you what, one person next to you right don't go and run around and give somebody else no this the next one it can be anywhere uh, virus no okay so left right doesn't matter right one one, one paper at a time right okay start and see what happens no, just, just, pass, just keep passing one person can only hold one paper at a time no, no quickly but you're not supposed to hold just, just pass one person can only hold one paper at a time and you cannot pass back to the person who give you that's why I asked you to sit closer Never mind. You can pass back in the front if you want also, as long as you're not the same person. You're not supposed to hold more than one paper at a time. You're not supposed to hold more than one paper at a time. You got a paper, pass it on. Get a paper, pass it on. Pass it on, pass it on. Pass on to someone, pass on to the person who did not, you did not receive from. Pass on to a person who did, you did not get it from. Don't hold more than two papers at a time. Pass it on. No, you're not supposed to pass by simple. Okay, okay, enough, enough, I think. Okay, pass back, pass back, pass back all the papers now. Do in front. No, bring back, bring, bring back, bring back, bring back. The experiment is over, come back. Pass back in front all, all of the, all, all, uh, all the light blue papers. Okay, you, you collect all of them. All right? So now, count how many are there? Make sure all, you get all correct. All right, so, so what do you learn from it? Huh? So what happens? When you, get a, when you get a packet of data, what happens? You pass it on, right? Do you make any decision before you pass on? Yes, no, how many? Nine, ten. ten. Okay. So, do you make any decision when you when you get a, when you get the okay when you get a paper just now? What do, what do you do? What, uh, what do you decide? Huh? Who to pass? Okay. Does it matter left, right, or whatever? It doesn't matter. So you just want to get the paper, get the data, pass it through your next one, and you and you only have to make sure that the paper you passed correctly to the other side. It is received on the other side correctly. Right? The paper doesn't get teared or doesn't get crumpled, right? Or doesn't get disappear, right? That's all. That's all you're doing. That's basically what the layer two is doing. Make sure the data packet is sent to the next hop, right? And then make sure it received correctly. You get a paper layer two checks it. Okay, I get it. Right? It is correct. Okay, then I pass it on to the next one, right? But is there end to it? 
There's no end to it. Why no end to it? Because we didn't, tell, we didn't say who's the destination. Right? The de destination is basically your next one. It's one hop away. Right? Your source is you. Destination is the person sitting next to you. And that person becomes the next source. And he or she will pass into a next destination, next destination who is the person next sitting next to it. Right? And it, it can go around and around and around. Right? So your brain, so your, you are doing the layer two. Who was doing the layer one? Who was doing the work of layer one just now? Your hands, yeah. Your hands basically <coughs> doing the layer one work. Right? Take the one from one side, pass it to the other side. That's all. Okay? All right, so th this is one. So basically it goes from one hop to another hop, right? So this is what it is, is doing, right? So to send data from, to go from here to here, it will go from A to B first. A will send data to B. B will send to next one. This will send to next one, and so on. So the layer two only responsible between hop and hop, between, between two machines. You can only d deliver uh, correctly from one hop to another hop, right? Nothing, nothing further than that. But this doesn't solve the problem because you want to send data, for example, from, from, from here to Yahoo, that's a different matter altogether, right? It's not enough, in other words. So that's where the layer three comes in, right? That's where the layer three comes in now. So layer three is basically gives you end-to-end -end delivery from source to destination, right? So layer two only ensures correct delivery from one hop to another hop, from one machine to another machine. Layer three will guarantee that your data will reach the destination, right? So here we require some kind of different, different addressing, which is the IP addresses here. So IP address of a destination machine has to be known. And then the other thing is that we need to do some kind of routing decisions. Right? Routing decision basically means that how, what is the path taken of your data. Before you send data, you need to find out which path should you take. Right? right? For example, like here, you're sending data from this machine to this machine, right? So you understand whether you understand, when it comes to here, this router has to decide whether to send it this way or to send this way. Right? So again, network layer will take the data from upper layer and then it will put the headers here and then pass it to the data link layer. Right? So what header does, what, header, what is the content of the header in layer three? Basically is the IP address, the destination address. So destination IP address, source IP address, these are two main things normally. Layer two, send this data to the next hop because it doesn't belong to me, right? So now the, the data link layer two will, will, will send it to the next hop, right? So you will send it to the next hop on the other side. You will not send back to the, to the back again, like just like in case you're not, you should not send back to the, to the original one. If the layer two is sent back here, then it will keep going here and here and it won't go anywhere else, right? So you cannot go back. So you can send this, Right, so in this case, it sends the data to the next hop, next machine, E. So B will, B, B, uh, layer three of B will direct the layer two and say, send this data to next hop, which is E. Right, you will send to E, go to the layer three of E, E will look at the IP address and say, hey, hey, this doesn't belong to me also. And as it says, and then tell it's uh, layer two, it say, this doesn't belong to me, please pass it on, right? Send to the next one and see what happens. Send the next one, to the link layer, pass it to the layer three of, of F, and then F, layer three will open up the packet, look at the IP address, and say, ah, this belongs to me. Okay, now fine. Now it has arrived. Then we will pass on to the layer above, right? So the header in, which put in the layer three will only be opened by the layer three on the other side. So the IP address will only be, seen by the layer three on each machine, not layer two. Layer three will, will not see the IP address, right? So network layer is responsible for the delivery of individual packets from source to 
destination, right? Okay, now come back to the experiment again. Second part of the experiment. Now we do layer three, right? So now layer three means that we cannot just, just simply send from hop to hop, right? We need to we need to send from source to destination. Okay, who's you holding it? Okay, you are the source then, right? So he's the source machine. Destination, destination. Okay, the, you in the green green shirt at the back. Your destination, all right? So he's the destination. So he's the source. You are the intermediate routers in between. All working at layer three now. Right? Your layer two will work, can only pass data to one person next to you. Left or right, doesn't matter. Right? And your hands are layer one. Take from one side, give to the other side. Right? But your layer three means you can decide now. Because you know where is it coming from and where is it going, then you decide which way you should pass. So you make some decision now. This now you simply pass, pass, pass all, all right? So again, pass one by one. You can pass left, right, and all that, right? Each person can, only, can hold the paper only one paper at a time. And then you know where the destination is. You, look and look, you know where the destination is, the person in green shirt there at the back. And then you try to pass to make sure that it reaches that, that way, right? Let's see what happens this time. Okay, pass on to left, right, or whatever it is. Give it to different people. You're supposed to make decision. I mean, make decision where the destination is. Don't simply pass on. Don't simply pass on. Try to make a decision where is the source and where is the destination. There's no point passing to this person here. Right? Sorry about that, but no, no point coming to here. <laughs> if you make a right decision, you will know that there's no point. You have to make a decision where is the destination. Hey. One paper at a time, not two. You're cheating. Luckily, layer three is, 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 is quite good. It doesn't cheat. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble. OK, have all the, all the papers, have the destination received all? <laughs> You're supposed to check. <laughs> 10 sheets of paper. All right, OK. So now, the destination is receive all, right? So you will check they receive. Now what happened, you see? When you pass the papers just now, what happens? Did the papers go all over? No, right? They only stick to around this side. He didn't get, you get, you supposed to, that side never get, that side at the back never get. Why? Because you know where the destination is. So you are sending the packets in the right direction. You know it's somewhere at the back, this side, right? But you just pass on the next person behind you instead of sending to the left and right, by right. Right? So you're making a routing decision. Right? So this is what the routers will do. Right? Get your data packet, and then look at the IP address, and also IP address is in this way. Right? Just like you say, you go from, say, from uh, USM to go to Batu Fringi. Right? There are many different roads to go, roundabouts, traffic lights, left, right, and all these things. There are many different ways to go, but you pick, as you go along, you decide whether I should go left or right today, right? depending on traffic conditions and so on. Okay. Okay, one more. Layer four. Are you, are, you, are you hold on to that? Because after after we'll start the third part of the experiment from from you afterwards, right? Okay. Now, so layer three ensures that the data reaches the destination safely. Right. Layer four makes sure that the data reaches the process correctly. Right? Each server, let me destination could have multiple servers, multiple services, email server, you can have a, a, a web server and so on. Right? So if a person, if that particular server is running multiple service, your data must be able to reach that, that the server by IP address and then which process or which application it should data should get. Right? 
For example, the, the sequence of papers are sent. The sequence of papers should be titled CST231. Uh, if I put C, CST353, it doesn't belong here. Right? It doesn't belong to, to in this case. Right? So here we have, so in transport layer uses a port address. Right? So layer 2 uses the MAC address. Layer 3 uses IP address. And layer 4 uses port address. Port address identifies a particular application on a machine. Right? And the other thing is that the transport layer also do market message segmentation and, and, and reassembly. Means that if you want to send a big piece of data, who decides how to break up the data into small packets? That's the job of the transport layer. Right? So you will, you will divide the message according to the packet size, break it up into small, small chunks, and then send it out to destination. Ask the layer three, okay, you send out all these things. But you make sure that all those chunks are received correctly on the other side. All the different messages, all, all the segments. So each segment will have a sequence number. Right? To make sure that if there are 10 packets, make sure all receive 10 the other side in the proper sequence again. Right? So you will check things like connection control, whether to send packets individually or make sure they follow all the same line. Flow control from end to end, make sure that all the, all the machines in between can actually receive it correctly. And then also error control from, from the end to end. Ensure the entire message you receive without errors, no errors, no loss, no duplication. Right? So again, we receive the chunk of data from the layer above. It breaks up into individual blocks or individual segments. Each segment will have a header. Right? And then you pass the individual segments to the layer 3. Layer 3 will put IP address and then sends it out. Right? So what the header of layer 4 will have? It will have things, for example, like sequence number. How many, how many packets are there, right? And would, what is the packet number and so on. To make sure, on the other side, once the layer four of uh, receiver receives the individual segments from layer three, it will combine them, make sure all the packets are received, put them in the proper sequence, and then combine them before can send data to the layer above. Because layer above sends one big chunk, you also must receive one big chunk. What happens in between, it doesn't matter. Right? So the important thing here is that responsible for delivery message from one process to another. And also in terms of the segmentation and reassembly. Right? So layer four, process to process delivery. One machine can have multiple processor applications running and Data comes say this, this process wants to send data to this process, this application to this application. Then it is identified by a different port number. Right? Network layer is from host to host only, up to here only. It does not know this. Right? It's like you, say, you send a Hariraya card right, to address. The address goes to one house. But there could be multiple persons living in the house. If you say Hariraya, you send Hariraya card to say number 26, house number 26. Jalan SS35, PJ. That's it. So anybody in the house can open it. Or, or nobody knows who to open it. Right? If you have multiple pieces of persons standing, uh, staying in the house, you must put the person's name. That's where the process comes in. Right? The port number now. Right? To identify individual applications on the, running on the same server. Right? So let's do the final part of the experiment now. Okay, now the person in green shirt, right? You have how many sheets? Ten, ten sheets of paper, right? Okay. I think if you look at on, there's one side is plain, blank. The other side is printed, isn't it? Printer one has number one to ten. Right? Okay. So you arrange them in sequence one to ten. Already arranged. Okay. So what he's going to do is that, so here's the source. Okay. The person in black here is the destination. Now, you are acting as, now he is layer four. You are layer four here. In between layer three uni. Because you are the routers. Right? That means you, once, you get a, once, you get a, once you get a paper, the packet, you will just 
send the paper towards destination. Doesn't matter the sequence number because the sequence number is in the in the header of layer four. It's above you. You cannot read that. You only know the, you only know the IP IP address, the destination IP, which is here. Right. So, for the green shirt, you're going to send, you're going to distribute the ten papers one by one, sequence number one, number two, to individual people. Each person sends it out, pass it on one person at a time. Make sure it reaches the site. Right? Okay. Let's start. Quickly, just just send. You you get you get a paper, send it out quickly. Try to send towards this side as fast as, fast as you can. This is a destination. Okay, you collect them. <coughs> and put them in, put them in the sequence you receive first. No, in the sequence you receive. As they come in, as they come in. So now I think the routing is working very well, <laughs> right? Because there's a, there's a certain sequence now, so you have learned. That's why after experience, the routers will do that also. After a while, he knows how to go from one place to another place very, very, very efficiently. Okay, now he has received all ten, right? Now, can you read out the the sequence or the papers the, in the sequence you receive them? Hang on, hang on. Okay. The sequence of sequence of packets you receive. One, five, three, two, seven, six, nine, four, ten, eight. All right. So, you see the problem? Yes, right. So, the the source send the packets. One by one, right? You send the first number two, number three, isn't it? The person in green. The person in green. Did you send the packets one by one in the right sequence? You sure? Okay, I I have to trust you. So he source sent the transport layer on the source sent the packets. There's a big 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 the pile of, of of papers. He put them one by one and then sends out label them one by one. He sends out, but the moment that on the, on the destination. Layer four of the destination receives them in a different sequence. Why? Why not they all arrive in the proper sequence? Why? Second. Ah, they have, they go different paths. Yes, because the packets, the paper did not follow the the same sequence, the same path from the go here. Right. So they, they they take different paths because each paper is is indip independent. There is an IP address on it. Say this this paper is supposed to go to this destination. That's it. After that, it's on its own, right? And you router intermediate intermediate. You get the paper. You just pass it on, right? So there is the routing decision is made independently based on the packet. Uh, we are not we are not looking at it because you at layer three does not look at layer four. You you will not you, you should not see the. The sequence number there. You're not going to say, "I wait." This is sequence number four. I wait, and they come. No, no. So once, so now, what happens when the layer four destination receives the papers in 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 not in sequence? Then destination has to before you can pass on to layer above. Right. So now the packets are received in the different sequence. So before you can combine them into and pass it on layer above, that means the destination, the layer four has to do reassembly of the packets in the correct sequence. So he or she has to make sure that the packets, first of all, make sure all packets are received, ten of them, because you send out ten, right? Make sure all the, all the packets are received, and then no duplication, no, no nothing is lost, no errors, and then put them in the correct sequence. Put them, combine them. Only then can be sent out to the layer above, right? So this basically tells you what what is happening, right? Okay, I think we will stop here then. 
Right. 